In this video, we're going to just show you a couple of CrowdDraw concepts for creating a template, so to speak, for doing our proof images. Um, and in the process of doing this, we're going to be adding this grid on top of our rhinestone design. Um, this was a customer request to, to just kind of show you how um, this could be done to help protect um, you know, what you're doing for your mock-ups. But let's just say um, for this mock-up, I'm just going to just draw out a shape. Let's go ahead and fill it with black for simplicity. And we're just going to kind of build this. Um, and, you know, exactly how you do it is not really that relevant, but we're just going to kind of bring all the pieces and show you some of the things that I would look for. So I have a t-shirt image um, that might be part of this template. So let's go ahead and drop that in. And you know we could use all the t-shirt like this or only a portion of it and I might just come in here and only use a portion of it so I might just come in here and kinda of crop this down to maybe something like that you know whatever you want to do for your mock-up you just kinda of have to decide what your mock-ups gonna be um, so we have that done and then um, I might like to put a line around my mock-up so what I would do is come over here and grab my square and I'm just going to draw out a square the same size and then let's give this outline a color so I might right click and choose a nice gray color for my outline and I might like to make it a little bit thicker so you can see now kind of what that looks like you know I think it helps uh, stands out a little bit now uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this so here's my rhinestone design right here Okay, so this is actually a left chest design. So let's just go ahead and I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to hit uh, shift page up. That brings the rhinestone design right to the top. So there's our rhinestone design, but we're also going to show it on the shirt. And we're going to make it quite a bit smaller to be more representative of a left chest design. So that's going to be fairly small. We stand back a little bit. And yeah, that's probably little bit closer to true to life size so we'll do something like that okay so there is our rhinestone design on our shirt left chest and then this is the uh, other rhinestone design um, and the actual size of the design is really not that uh, relevant as far as the actual circle size what we're doing is we're enlarging it to show detail so there we go so we'll do something like that let's say we want to do something like that and then we could just kind of slide this over and again let's go ahead and just fine-tune the exact placement of that design something like so just kind of center it left to right then down below here well, if we want to we could draw another box and we could get real particular and I'm actually gonna right click on that gray color again and yes let's go ahead and make it the same size and again the spacing left to right you know we could get real particular and have that exactly same spacing and maybe even the same spacing up a little bit like that okay and then we can take our text tool and let's just go ahead and uh, type in just some text it doesn't really matter what because we're just really really what we're doing right now is make it a template so it could be anything we want it to be. It could be any size we want it to be. Um, again, this is just the template portion of it. The text should probably be center justified here. All right. So there is our first line of text. And maybe we want to make a second line of text. And maybe this second line of text, you know, we don't want it as big or something like that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take those two lines of text, I'm going to group them together, and I'm going to make them bigger to kind of fill in the area here. And then I'm going to take my outside rectangle, holding my shift key, and hit C and E. That kind of centers everything up. Okay. So that kind of gives you a generic, uh, I'm going to go ahead and ungroup that, kind of gives you just a real generic uh, setup for uh, creating your mockups. So over here on the left, you're going to have your large design and then over here on the right you're going to have your smaller uh, t-shirt example 
whether you're doing a left chest or a full size or whatever. Okay. So now, um, from there, what we uh, might want to do is put in a watermark. Now, if we were going to do this manually, uh, manually, let's just type in. I'm just going to type in www.easystonetemplates.com. Okay, so you can see there is my easystonetemplates.com. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this a whole bunch of times. So, watch how this works. Just take your pick tool, grab it, and offset it, and then hit Control D D D D D D, a bunch and bunch and bunch and bunch and bunch of times. Okay, how many times? That's up to you. You can do it as many times as you want. And then we're going to do the exact same thing the other direction. Okay, and boom, 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 something like that. Okay, and then we're going to select all of that, and let's make it white for this example. And then let's add uh, some transparency. So we'll come in here, we'll do some uniform transparency, and let's set the transparency to 70. Okay, and once we've done that, let's switch back over to our pick tool. I'm going to right click and drag right over the top of that black background square. And I'm going to choose power clip inside. And what that does, if you look real closely, uh, you can see that that text is sitting on that black object and it's kind of been clipped away. So I'm going to right click and choose edit contents and you can't see anything because it's obviously it's white. So we're going to go ahead and move that over and you know what I'm going to duplicate this down and again you can't really see anything so let's go to wireframe mode because then we can see exactly what we're doing there. So I didn't do a very good job of copying that down so let's go ahead and delete that because I do want to rotate my text a little bit. So I need more text is basically what I'm getting at here. So there we go. Now we did a better job. And I'm just going to set the spacing between the top and bottom to be more consistent. So we're just using our arrow keys to fine tune that position. There we go. All right, so that we could be happy with. And then let's grab that whole thing, click on it, and rotate it. You know, the amount of rotation could be whatever you want it to be. I'm just going to take this and kind of reposition my text a little bit so that my whole square, you see my whole square is now filled, right? So we're going to go ahead and choose Finish Editing This Level. And we're going to go back to the View Enhance Mode. And now you can kind of see how cool that is, right? We've got our text in the background. It's, it's not on top of our design. It's in the background. And everything's looking pretty cool. And then if we want to, we can do one more thing to this. And we have to pay close attention to exactly how we go about doing this in terms of the layer stack. So let's look at this. Over here in your object manager, you've got your two uh, objects of your artistic text and then you have your rectangle. So we're going to create a new object below this rectangle. So let's come over here and grab this. Now of course right now it's going to be put on the top but we're actually going to move this below and it, it might help us to, to we'll call it grid rectangle okay and basically what we're going to do now is we're going to create a grid and there's lots of ways to do this perhaps the most simple way to create a very basic grid now again we're going to do the same type of thing that we did previously so let's just draw out a straight line Okay, let's pick this line up, drag it, left click, and then we're going to right click. And control DDD lots of times. So just keep doing this. Keep doing it as many times as you want. As many times as you think you need to, to fill the area that we're looking to fill. And then we're going to duplicate it. We're going to click on it, and we're going to rotate it. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take all these lines and we're going to give them a color of, let's just do a light, light shade of gray for this example first. So we're going to right click to change the outline to a really light shade of gray. Okay, so now you can see we have this grid, right? And then all I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click 
and drag. And the same thing as before, power clip inside, and we should be power clipping inside our grid rectangle. And look at that. There is our power clip inside our grid rectangle. Okay, so now you can kind of see how that uh, is going to cover up uh, that grid rectangle. Now I'm going to right click on it and choose Edit Contents again. And I'm going to go ahead and reposition this grid so it covers up the square we're looking to cover up. So now my grid is covering my square. And then I'm going to come back in here and add my transparency. So we're going to do uniform transparency and then we're going to play with our transparency a little bit. So let's try. I would try a very low transparency. I would try like 80% uh, transparent, which is fairly transparent. Okay. We'll choose finish editing this level because you, I guess you want the grid there, but you don't want it to be so distracting. Uh, but now you can see the grid is on top of our t-shirt. You can still see the design. Okay. Um, and you can see the grid is still on top of our rhinestone design. Now the grid right now is very thin, so let's choose edit contents again because we may want to thicken it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and select our, our grid again and let's give it a thickness of let's say four. And let's take a look at it. You really can't tell um, because it's obviously it's somewhat transparent. So now you can see the grid lines are a little bit wider. Um, and you know what? If you like that uh, look, where you and notice that the grid is not on top of our text. Um, so if our text, let's change our text color. So you can see that the grid doesn't affect our text. So it's a lot easier to see. Um, but it is over our design. And if you can see that very well, but if we were to change one of our, uh, let's go ahead and change one of our circles here. Um, you can see that the circle um, is below our grid so it actually goes over you can barely see it but it's actually going over our circle there um, me personally I like to doing the watermark uh, background only um, but if you want to do a grid uh, on top of the, everything that's an easy way to do it and you can totally adjust uh, the line thickness of the grid and the spacing, you know, how wide the grid is, um, all that very, very easily. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can go about creating this as a template. And then, of course, it's just a matter of selecting the appropriate object um, here uh, in your object manager. When I, If I want to delete, uh, get rid of that design and put in another one, I'm able to. And likewise, over here, I can delete this design. And so I can save this file as a new template, and then I can just slide my designs in um, appropriately. So very, very easy to do, but hopefully that gives you an idea how to do these mockups uh, using a grid and a watermark background.